guys, welcome to this midweek episode of R&D Garage. So today we're back in the house, we're not in the garage, don't need to stay warm out there. Today I decided to kind of focus on some of my model cars. Now you guys know I live and breathe cars, so of course I have a ton of model cars. Now this is just a small sample, I have a lot more, and again if this is what you guys want to see, let me know and I will definitely, definitely show you more of what I have to offer. So I picked some of my favorites today and I'm going to describe just a little bit um, of maybe history or why exactly I have it. And again, I hope you guys enjoy it. So, okay, so I have to start with every time Dee and I get a car, um, like a real car, <laughs> we get a model of it. Some of these have been a little bit hard to find, but you know, there's so much on the internet these days. When we first started collecting, it was a little harder. We'd have to go to car shows and buy cars there. But now, <laughs> I hear Turbo walking in the background, but now it's so easy to purchase online. And if you guys are interested, I can definitely provide those links. Okay, let's get started. So you guys, my grandpa, Sid was also a very, very big car guy. And he knew pretty early on that I was kind of following in his footsteps. And so instead of a Barbie doll when I was seven for my seventh birthday, he got me a Playmobil truck. Now, I know this isn't like your typical model car or model truck, but let me tell you, I'm, I'm still so in love with this and just so over the moon with my grandpa for knowing that this is what I would want. Don't get me wrong, I love my Barbies and everything, but man, this. I literally took this thing apart probably about 75, no, I'm gonna go like 150 times, probably more. <laughs> but I would drive it all over the place, just so much fun. And so I'm not gonna say exactly how old this is, <laughs> but you can see, oops, it came with like tools, it came with a bunch of little people to drive it, yeah, so this is like my prized possession. Like this is this is my my first grandpa truck. So thank you, grandpa. Okay. So after that, oh my gosh. Okay, so I am a big, big fan of Back to the Future. Literally, when you hear someone like, oh, that's my fangirl thing, that's my fanboy thing, Back to the Future is my fangirl thing. And so you can imagine, I literally have almost every DeLorean model they made. Like I have the plain ones, I have the half ripped apart ones when they're working on it. But this one, Dee got me for um, the holidays last year and it's insane. I've never seen one with all the wiring, you know, the, what do they call it? The flux capacitor, <laughs> um, just the detail is just super sick. And I'm not sure where he got this, I'll have to ask him. But honestly, it's just, oh, it's it's the DeLorean of all my Marty McFly dreams. So very, very cool. Okay, so do you guys, I don't, I don't know if you're old enough, but to remember key cars. <laughs> so this was um, basically the Magnum PI Ferrari. This actually isn't mine. <laughs> my mom bought me one. Oh God, I had to be pretty small again, maybe five or six, but Literally on my maiden voyage, I got it stuck in the planter in the front yard, like in a crack between the cement porch and the planter. And years later, when they finally ripped out the planters, it had completely disintegrated. So I only had one maiden voyage with my key car and that was it. But luckily Dion was a little bit more careful with his. And so this was the kind, I think you like stuck the key in and then it like revved up and then it went off. But anyway, I was, yeah, I mean, check out the keychain. That is like really, really sick. So thankfully we still have a key car in the family. Okay, now this is like, again, just something I love. So I got this from an Instagram friend that paid for it, obviously. A little pricey, that's why it's still in the box, but it's my little Miss Hatchie. It's the Spoon Library. And it's just the attention to detail on these are just incredible. So, Eventually I'll take it out of the box, but not today. Okay, oh. <laughs> so a few years ago, well, more than that, 2008, I bought my first Mini Cooper S, first and last, well, aside from the old one. And I couldn't find one that had, that was my car, which was basically, I believe it was the chili pepper red with the two black stripes and the black roof, although mine had a sunroof. Well, I, I used to work 95, nine to five, like, you know, 
pretty much everybody. And I got bored one day. And of course I had model cars at work on my desk and everything. And I was like, I had a Sharpie. And <laughs> when people say, oh, you should be an artist. I say, no, I shouldn't because I Sharpied the roof and I gave it some racing stripes. Not bad, huh? Yeah, no, it's really bad, but it makes me laugh. Okay. And of course we have the old mini, which I make you bet this would actually run better than the one we have at the warehouse. But I thought it was pretty cool because, you know, it's basically the same color, color match pattern. We've got the tan interior. So yeah, not much to say. They all see how they're running their exhaust and suspension. Yeah, no. Okay. And then of course, of course, we have the 67 Mustang Fastback. So this one just makes me smile because, you know, Dee's first car was, or still is, the 1967 Mustang Fastback that I've worked on a few times. And I literally can't wait until that car's on the road. I know we keep starting other projects and everything, but looking at this model makes me smile because it reminds me of basically the early days and it was super fun. And a funny story about that. So in his type of fastback, there was like a place to put like rolled up seat belts. Like he would roll it up around the metal part and then tuck it into a little pocket. And one day I asked him, I'm like, that's so cool. How, I mean, like every time we get out of the car, do you wrap them up and put them in the little pocket? He's like, no, basically every time I wash the car, I roll up the seat belts and put them in there. And then I got to thinking literally every night um, we would go out and every night the seatbelt would be in the pocket. So I think someone had a crush on me anyway. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, of course. Okay, so I just got this one. I bought it for D for Christmas, but I kind of bought it for myself too because it is the first kind of true to life FJ that I've found. I mean, obviously I don't have the roof rack or anything, and this color is more of a dark charcoal gray than it is green, but it was so damn close that I'm like, you know what, I'm buying it. So, looks really cool. Okay, this one, basically we have, just because it's been Dee's dream to own a 56 pickup Ford F100 or F150. So yeah, this is super sick. Not really a story behind it, but <laughs> every year I buy him another pickup. Okay, I did own an XB. It was a 2005, I believe, because that was a special edition year. And of course I had to go for the yellow um, performance year, which basically just meant you got exhaust, performance exhaust, performance, and an intake. And then of course, I believe we lowered it and did a whole bunch of other stuff, but it's long gone. But anyway, so that was actually a fun little car to drive. The only thing was the corners. I mean, it's literally like a little box, like you guys can see. And so I literally, I think at some point munched every single corner of the car, either backing up or taking a turn too tight, just because, yeah, we're gonna move on. Okay, so now we have, yeah, why not? A little Integra Type R, because you guys know uh, D used to actually have a Type R back in the day, and I had a white GSR, so of course we had to have a little yellow ITR. Grandpa truck! So it's basically been the hardest thing in the world trying to find a lunar green one of these. Um, so whenever I see a grandpa truck that is basically almost the same year, I just buy it because it's pretty neat looking. Now I just need like little people sitting in the bed or something. That'd be kind of cool. Err. So let's see, we've got that. Oh yeah, so we've obviously got tons of hatches here. So nothing really notable about these, although we may be doing something like this to the hatchy next. It's up in the air. But I really, really love the golf. I thought that was really sick. Something about baby blue and orange. You wouldn't think it works together, but it's just, it's amazing. And then I have my Japanese FJ that I got at, I believe it was Toyota Fest. And so last, no, not last year, last year was bad, 2019, <laughs> the last time we went. And so I saw these and uh, had to get like two. So this one I thought was super cool. 
And you guys know, obviously, we have an STI. So, of course, we have to have the World Rally Blue STI. Blueberry, which a lot of you liked on my Instagram post when I kind of posed uh, baby blueberry and mama blueberry together. So that was kind of where I got the idea also to do this because just I got a lot of positive feed feedback on that one. So I was like, okay, you guys want to see my models? I'll show you my models. So it's baby blueberry. And I think that's almost it. Oh, well, you know, of course we have the lotus. This one is not chrome orange, but it was pretty much the closest I could find. And I don't, oh yeah, look at that. I don't think I've ever done that before, but anyway, it does lift off. Super cool. And yep, da -da -da. yeah, I mean, that was basically it. Wow, that went faster than I thought. So definitely, if you guys want to see a part two of all these model cars, let me know and I will totally, totally get it done. But as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching R&D Garage. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, commenting, sharing my videos. It's so appreciative. And now I got to figure out what we're doing this weekend, but there will be something cool going on. So have a great rest of your week until then, and I'll talk to you later.